Hi. The traditional embedded system started out as a single purpose device that runs a simple flat memory RTOS. When the use of Linux as an RTOS became more prevalent, embedded system, especially those based on Linux, started to look more like headless, lighter wave versions of PCs and laptops. With cloud computing, the desktop applications evolved into on-demand services that sit behind data centers. You can get to it with a browser or client app. The cloud services are separated into front and back end, and they're implemented in different programming languages and frameworks. They typically run on virtual machines, containers, or even bare metal hardware. By extension, edge computing is a more real-time, miniaturized versions of the cloud data center that are geographically situated close to where information is collected and consumed. On one end, the edge cloud is a spoke to the traditional cloud. On the other, it acts as a hub to hundreds of connected wired and wireless devices. In this talk, we look at the development of edge devices that deliver the connected driving experience of the autonomous vehicle. The purpose of a car is evolving and adoptions of sensor fusions is pushing on-demand mobility to the top of the list. Over 60% of ride-sharing respondents surveyed by McKinsey indicated that they intend to continue or increase their usage in the following years. Also based on recent projection, ride sharing is expected to grow 19% between 2020 to 2026 to reach $209 billion. That is still with 70% of the global market unexplored. In contrast, the car market itself is expected to grow at 4.8% during the same period to reach 25.7 billion. Put another way, the car market is roughly 12% of the ride sharing market, and that figure is decreasing. By 2023, 70% of cars on the road will be connected to the internet. The, the fact that moving vehicles would now be part of a massive and evolving cloud ecosystem certainly drawing interest from device and platform makers, cloud vendors, communication equipment makers, as well as enterprises. This is representing challenges and opportunities alike to the automakers, but now presented with several options. One is they can retool their process and infrastructure to be more agile to purpose-built vehicle, which is certainly a growing trend in the coming years. Next, or alternatively, they can be a platform player or partner with one. You've seen this approach being taken by the startup Rivian, who is building delivery vans for Amazon. Um, also, they can be a fleet operator by taking advantage of uh, their relationship with key cities and municipal to invest in capacity building. Whether you're part of a complete vehicle building process or one of the components in the supply chain, you will certainly need to access a shared mobility platform that, enab that enables you to explore, build, and deploy products and services for connected driving as required by your customers. It's challenging to build connected cars. Level four and five connected cars are expected to contain nearly 1 billion lines of code, with development life cycle lasting from three to five years, if not longer. In perspective, the F-35 fighter jet contains a mere 3.5 million lines of code. Connected cars operate in a diverse environment under unplanned conditions in different geography, regulation, environment and weather conditions. 
they utilize both short range and high frequency communication, the so-called DSRC, or dedicated short range communication, which is right below the six gigahertz frequency spectrum as a high speed cellular access. The fact that cars and other vehicle objects, other vehicular objects, are relying on their ability to reliably and quickly communicate among themselves and with cloud-based agents for safe and uh, optimized operation makes it particularly challenging to design, test, and validate them. The traditional black and white box testing methods in which known sets of test vectors are applied to a particular component or device, and then the output is used to compare against expected outcome, don't provide sufficient coverage for the dynamic world in which the connected cars operate. In addition, there is now the shifting landscape of the instruction set architecture, or ISA, that is putting additional pressure and burden on the silicon companies to make the right decision on which ISA to baseline their design for the next three to five years. My name is Hugh Tran of Edge Lab, and I'd like to discuss how the automotive digital twins can help to minimize risks and accelerate time to market for the connected vehicle. So what is a digital twin? Digital twins are essentially simulated replicas of physical assets. Physical assets here can be tangible, such as sensors, engine control units, and CPUs, or they can be intangible, such as networking software that are running in containers or VMs. A mixed reality simulation environment is one in which the behavior of some actors mirror that of real world physical assets, while that of the other actors are simulated. The key differentiation of the automotive digital twins is the closed loop environment that is capable of producing real world stimulus for the device under test. Whereas black and white box validations and testing cannot. In Edge Lab, the degree of fidelity, aka realness, of a given actor can be adjusted for the purpose of simulation. For example, a behavioral model can be used as a CPU actor if the objective is to characterize software compatibility. On the other hand, psychoaccurate model or hardware platform is necessary if the purpose is to look for the instruction per cycle KPI of a given ISA. We'll have a more detailed look at how this works next. The automotive chip design process in general entails a number of key high level activities. We can start with the selections of the instruction set architecture, which is one of the most important and interesting tasks. The choice of ISA has a significant downstream impact that include the size of the finished silicon, the initial investment, or what they call capex, ongoing, ongoing royalties, as well as development and legacy support costs, both for hardware and software. Expandability and flexibility are also question marks. What are some of the factors that are involved in order to pivot and evolve the design based on the chosen ISA future needs? How complex is the ISA? How does that affect the vibrancy of the developer ecosystem? And last but not least, how well does the ISA perform? More importantly, how well does it perform for your particular application? And once a decision is made, IO peripherals, GPUs, and other application accelerators can then be added to the mix in order to create a system on chip and hardware platform. In the case of an automotive product, the hardware platform will need to undergo training and validation, both in the standalone as well as in the connected context. With Edge Lab, it's possible for you to subject the device and the test in this case, the instruction set architecture, to real-world stimulus 
in a closed loop environment in order to fully evaluate its efficacy. In a mixed reality simulation environment like EdgeLab, a platform that is based on a specific ISA at various stages of design, such as a virtual platform, hardware emulators, FPGA, and of course the full ASIC can be instantiated and deployed along with other physical or virtual assets. Note that the KPI that you can extract from the environment depends on the fidelity of the device and the simulation. With the virtual model, you can see cycle for instruction, cache, and TLB misses. And you can look at the effectiveness of the branch prediction and cache replacement strategies of your implementation under load, and so on. With a virtual model, I'm sorry, with hardware emulation, you have even more visibility and control almost down to the Git level. But you're having to make that trade-off between speed and fidelity. Uh, in this context, fidelity means visibility and control. Ultra-high fidelity platforms, uh, because of the fact that it's so low level, may not run fast enough to keep up with, real, with the world clock of the simulation environment. And at that point, one of the strategies that can be deployed is to replace the device and the test with a behavioral model that runs faster. Uh, the Edge Lab cloud environment provides the infrastructure that lets you capture the data in and out of the model, which then used to be um, as a vector in an open loop setting context. Let's take a look um, at sensor in another use case. There are growing diversity of the kind of the kind and type of sensor that goes into a vehicle. There are the usual uh, sensor that provide location functions such as GPS, speed and orientation, uh, driveway drivetrain telemetry, such as um, engine RPM, temperature, fuel, and so on, environmental status, um, such as air te temperature, humidity, and so on. With the connected car, it's increasingly common for the automakers and suppliers to develop and deploy custom sensors. Uh, we saw that when the cameras were added to the operations of a car. And earlier when we talked about opportunities for the automakers to pivot to platform players or fleet operators, under that scenario, custom sensors to provide tracking services and payload status will be built into the vehicle as a standard component as opposed to something that is added on post-production. And just as in the case with computer hardware, you will, you will also need to consider between speed and fidelity um, when, when you characterize the sensor using this environment. We'll see how that's done next. So let's take a look at how we would handle data realism or IO fidelity in the digital twin simulation. On the left, hand side of this picture is a block diagram of a typical system on chip platform that runs Linux, courtesy of ST Micro. Here, we refer to the device under simulation as the target, the digital twin replica as the remote client. By interacting with the remote client at the library level in the user space, the simulation environment intercepts all high level API IO function calls and replace them with data transact transaction to and from the remote client. This is what we call coarse grain fidelity, and it enables us to develop and characterize the functions of the application that runs on the target. Now, it may not be super helpful by way of generating useful KPI for the target hardware platform, but it's fast, and it's an excellent way to determine the software efficacy of the overall target platform, especially when you're moving over to a new ISA, when all of that is an unknown. In the same way, we intercept the data flow at the driver level 
and substitute the actual device driver on the target with a proxy that transacts data to its counterpart twin. Now, a significant part, if not most of the data processing, both in user and kernel mode, will now execute natively, and that will deliver for you a high dev simulation experience. Ultimately, we can operate at the hardware abstraction level where the environment transacts either register or packet contents, packet level contents as they appear in IODMA. It should be obvious that in exchange for this level of realism, a significantly large amount of data will be exchanged between the simulation environment and the device under test. And this can impact both the speed and resolution of the simulation environment. Another a similar example on the communication side can be seen on the right-hand side, wherein the interaction between the environment and the test and the simulation can occur at various ORAN or NFAPI split option that corresponds to different SIPRI uh, specification split option. The virtual simulation environment is an important part of a closed loop narrative um, of the digital twin concept. Edge Lab works with both open source as well as commercial virtual simulation environment. Here we have a blueprint that demonstrates interoperability with Siemens pre-scanned virtual environment. In this blueprint, as simulations of a car with all the physics is modeled using MATLAB. We added to this model a wireless communication device, which is, which is essentially a 4G baseband modem. We then instantiate a full wireless network complete with the evolved packet core and virtual base station that can wirelessly transmit signal um, to the modem in the car. You can see a number of ways that this blueprint can be leveraged. For instance, the virtual model of a SOC can replace some or all of the MATLAB components in order to provide visibility into the inner working of the platform and the ISO. Because of the interactive nature of the closed loop environment, the hardware and software subsystem of the system on chip can experience the full dynamic and the impact of real world data that really is impossible in a open loop simulation environment. The same setup can also be used to develop uh, V2I, vehicle to infrastructure use cases. Here, the base station can transmit traffic and road conditions, as well as signal timing to approaching vehicle. Um, this enabled driver-assisted or fully driverless car to make the safest and most optimal driving decisions. And since wireless signal between the base station and the car can occur virtually within the simulation environment, Edge Lab provides the tools and infrastructure necessary to model signal strength and path loss based on various assumptions such as the speed of the vehicle, the shape and material of the surrounding buildings, weather conditions, and so on. As always, the operations, the operations of digital twins environment is a fine-tuned balance between speed and fidelity. So to sum up, in this short presentation, we look at how Edge Lab Digital Twins Cloud Platform can be used to address some of the challenges and complexity associated with the development of cooperative driving by letting you explore, test, and validate, as well as design software for your product earlier in the development cycle. The so-called left ship approach minimizes the development cycle, brings more agility that makes it easier for the automakers to integrate products vertically, as well as helps make the connected driving experience safer and more reliable for our customers. Thank you.